Hi there, Dr. Gary here on the road. We sell dental practices nationwide. Today's topic is buyer complains he won't make enough money purchasing a practice. Maybe he'll stay as an employee. Let's talk about that. As you know, we're in multiple states now. We have 10 employees, two CPA accountants, and a whole team to take care of you. We're doing this 13 years, and we're in, uh, I was a dentist for 25. We've done hundreds of transactions. Now, you can reach us now, 363 days a year. We work every day except Christmas and Easter, so please call us. We're available from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. East Coast time. Our number is 201-663-0935. And our website is dentalpracticeguide.com or nationwidedentalpracticebrokers.com. We're available to you. Everything you're about to hear is for uh, entertainment purposes. It's not legal or business advice. Now, if you're thinking about selling to a DSO, please give us a call. We work with all of them across the country. We know who the best ones are. So just call us. Uh, when you work with us, and they're going through a lot of changes now, DSOs. When you work with us, uh, often the DSOs will pay our commission, so there's no commission to you as a seller. And secondly, when you work with myself and my team, uh, we'll get your legal fees reimbursed based on criteria uh, at successful closing. So essentially, it's not costing you any net legal fees. So we can explain our program for that. Now... Um, also, when you work with us, you, uh, you know, there's so many, uh, what we have, the capabilities and staffing and uh, an entire approach that we're going to stand behind you right up until in five minutes after the closing, we don't stop. And we're available to you after the closing too. But we have the experience and we just stay on top of every moving part. And that's what we do day and night, all to help you. So anyway, this buyer is shaking in their boots because they're not going to make enough money. They'll take a hit buying a practice. They'll make less money. Yeah, maybe for a year or two it's possible. But what the buyer is not factoring in is the growth. There's about a 20% increase the first year average United States when someone buys a practice. Not taking that into consideration. A big thing is disability. The buyer figures, well, I'm making 300000 and if I had to pay, buy the practice, I'm only going to make 170000 Well, yeah, I can understand. What about if you get disabled on Friday? How much money are you making on Monday? And they go, well, I'm not making anything. I said, well, if you own a practice, you hire your friends. They'll come in. They'll work the practice. The hygienists will work. The staff will be there. Uh, and while you're disabled, your buddies will work and continue to make money. How much money are you going to make when you're disabled? Well, I'm not making anything, the doctor says. And you can't make enough in disability to equal the practice. So you are going to be in big time trouble. Now, secondly, when you own a business, you have certain tax write-offs. Okay? Sole proprietor has a lot of tax write-offs that you don't get as a W-2 1099. So you're going to get 20% more income right there. So stop scrutinizing dollar for dollar because it's not. Okay? It's not that way. What if the owner of the practice decides to fire you? and hire somebody else. What if the owner of the practice sells the practice and doesn't sell it to you? You're out of a job. You're weighing everything on the fact that you earned 300,000 last year and you'll earn 300 this year. Why? Because you base it on last year. And you don't have the tax write-offs, you just don't know. It's a foolish way of thinking. Now, you're gonna work harder than the doctor you're buying from. He's probably an older doctor. He's gonna, you know, reaching retirement, you're going to push harder on your uh, treatment plans and to be more aggressive in following up treatment plans. You're going to do more marketing than the doctor was doing. You're going to keep the endo in-house. It's like you've got to see what the growth potential is, not for the first year, but for the next 25, 30 years. You'll certainly make up the difference. There's an attorney I knew, he once said to me, look, it doesn't matter what you pay for a dental office, 10 or 15%. It 
18% higher than the market value or the cash flow because you're buying a business. You're going to make it back. It's not like buying a house. It's an inanimate object. It doesn't generate income. You're buying a business that generates income. So that's how you do this. It's real important for you to understand this, that if you try to equate what you're going to earn at the practice, you'll never find the right practice. Then you go buy that million dollar practice. It just, just doesn't make sense. When you try to balance what you're doing with the dental practice compared to the uh, being an employee, you're never going to win. That is, you're probably, you can make initially more money with the dental, with the employee, but you're not getting the tax write-offs. So you're making some big mistakes here and some misconceptions. So we try to get that message across. Now I'll try to talk to the doctor, I'll try to talk to the sellers, but the sellers are not reducing their price because of your lifestyle. No, that's not happening. So you just gotta suck it up a little bit. And then when you go to success rate, right? It's 99.75% success rate that's written by one of the major banks. Dentistry doesn't fail and you're gonna do better. One of the largest banks did 1.2 billion in 22. You know how many failures they had? Less than five failures or less than six failures. And most of those are due to mental health problems, drugs, whatever. Nobody fails, you will not fail. Just get it out of your mind. You don't enter something going into failure in an extremely successful profession that the statistics have proven is 99.75%. That's it, those are the numbers. You just got to get used to this, okay? So call me. We'll talk about it. If you have these problems, if you're getting cold feet, you're always better off buying a practice. I'm not just saying this as a broker. I mean, I had three practices. There's no freaking way I want to work with somebody else. Not doing it. Maybe for a year when I did my residency. Just get out there and make it happen. Stop shaking in your boots. You will do fantastic. Listen, no studios here, fancy studios, blue light, green plants, uh, lighting perfect. It's not perfect. I'm sorry. We're doing the best we can. I got to work on this project now, work on this doctor, call the uh, call his accountant. I mean, I got a lot of work to do. I'm sorry they don't have time to write books, go to the studio, write articles one of these days maybe, but things are breaking too fast. We tell you like it is from the street. Um, from the front lines, and that's where it's all about. Things are breaking every day. Uh, hit the subscribe button, listen to all of our tapes. We have 340 something. I've lost track. We have more YouTube videos on buying, selling, demo practice than anybody in the country. Call me, we're on it, having a great time every day.